Strasvudia, comrades. In today's video, we look at new American voting machines. Okay, bad jokes aside, uh, this is a what I believe to be about a 1990s uh, Sovtech or Sovtech. You guys are all my ass constantly about the way I pronounce things, so I'll pronounce it both ways from now on. Sovtech or Sovtech. I've always said Sovtech, so it's a fucking Sovtech. So there you go. This is a MiG-50. Uh, they also made a MiG-60, um, which, you know, some people have said the MiG-50 is supposed to be... Um, like a clone of a baseman while the MiG-60 MiG is a clone of a Marshall 2204 or vice versa. I'm not sure which is which. I haven't done any research, so there you go. What I do know about these is that typically you need to change all of these potentiometers because they are, frankly, from the factory, shit. Um, if you were to take, there are actually most of these have already been replaced. These two have been replaced, it looks like. These two have been replaced. And the reason I know that is because they have different knobs on them. Uh, when you do replace these with any kind of uh, American part or Asian part or whatever, um, or Chinese part, what have you, uh, the shafts are a little bit bigger, so you have to go with a different uh, knob. The original knobs, um, you would have to drill those out. I'll show you what I mean a little bit later, but um, this pot and this pot still look to be original, so we'll get a comparison of what the uh, old ones look like and uh, what new ones look like when they're hopefully uh, installed correctly. Oh, and the customer did say that input number two, uh, he was having problems with the second channel. Uh, so we'll check that out as well. We'll keep that in mind. Okay, here's what the rear of the amp looks like with the screen still on. Um, not much back here really going on. We have a 4, 8, and a 16 ohm output. Um, we have a couple of a uh, couple of fuse holders with fuses, hopefully, uh, that are the correct values, and we'll check that in a little bit. And we have a socket. Here is uh, a switch for 110 uh, versus 220 um, operation. If you're in Europe, uh, you switch over to 220 or uh, Australia or what have you, uh, countries that use 220. There's your switch for that. A um, couple of big can capacitors here that we may have to end up changing, I'm not sure yet. Um, there's something funky about, I do remember the last time I was in one of these, there's something funky about the transformers. They're like, um, I can't remember what it was. They're put together in a weird way and it, they're, it's got some weird design or assembly uh, things going on, like this big plate up on the top of this one. And then you've got some plates on the sides of the output transformer back there as well that are kind of kind of strange. Um, okay, before we turn it over and look at the guts, let's take a look at uh, the components on the top here. Uh, namely the tubes, uh, which are correct. These are Softec 5881s, which are pretty much uh, some of the only tubes out there that can handle the voltages uh, that these things uh, have on the B+. Uh, so you want to try to stick with Russian tubes if you have one of these Softecs. Um, otherwise, you might be in a world of hurt. Um, I have read some other people who've used, you know, JJ 606s and stuff with some success, but you know, I don't know. You might be pushing it on the voltages um, on those. Um, let's see what our preamp tubes are. I'm guessing they would be Softex as well, and that's what they look like. Uh, yes, that one's a Softex. Uh, let's see. That one look, also looks like a soft tech. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have soft techs all around here. Yep. These might even be the original tubes. And if they're still going strong, I mean, we'll, we're gonna leave them. Uh, but see what I mean about the transformers? They just look different um, than what we're typically used to seeing over here. Um, right here, there's some kind of. Uh, I don't know. Is that like a piece of fiberglass? board or something in there. They've done the same thing. They've done the same thing with this uh, power transformer. See what I mean? It's like some kind of fiberglass board or something with some etched numbers on it. Just a weird a weird thing to put on a 
transformer. Maybe that's to keep you from reaching up in there on accident or something and um, touching some open uh, wiring. I don't know. Strange. Uh, anyway, let's flip it over and take a look at the guts. Alright, here we are inside the unit. Uh, and as we can see, we have, in addition to the original electrolytics, the large cans, we have all these original uh, electrolytics still uh, throughout the amp. All these are still original. And they will all really need to be changed. Um, I don't see any signs of physical wear or anything on any of these, but at the same time, they've been in here long enough. And as a recommendation to my customer, I'm going to recommend he go ahead and change these um, and these larger caps as well. Um, we have some overheating, perhaps, on a couple of these components. They just look like they have taken a little bit of heat at some point. I noticed another one over here. It looks like it has taken a little bit of heat as well. We may measure that and uh, or just replace it with the original R6 value but at a higher wattage rating maybe. Um, I don't see anything else. Uh, obviously burned but um, here's here's a big disappointment uh, when they changed the uh, pots out they did not bother to um, to, uh, to remove them from the board so that's kind of a bummer that would have saved me probably a lot of work uh, but as is um, I'm gonna have to replace all of them oh yeah I just spotted something else sometimes when you're looking through this camera you get sort of a fish eye and you don't spot obvious things like that R27 right there you see how that's re replaced uh, it might be okay and it might be allowed to stay but I need to check it against the schematic and make sure it's correct value and all that um, but we'll just put that under our hats as well R27 we need to check out alright on these capacitor values these two large cans back here are 220 microfarads at 350 volts and they are run in series um, and that what that does basically is it halves the value but it um, uh, it doubles their power handling um, we have a 100 microfarad at 160 volt right here and the rest of these are all 47 microfarad at 350 volts um, or at least I think that one's 350 no, pardon me, that one is 450. So 47 at 450, and then four 47s at 350. Uh, so that's the caps we're going to need. Um, or you could do as some people do on these, and they, re they actually change some of these capacitor values uh, to more closely match uh, a basement circuit. And to be more specific, a basement 5F6 circuit. Here's a schematic for the MiG-50 um, and we have Bruce Collins of Mission Amps to thank for this. I appreciate that Bruce. Uh, so some people one of the mods they make is they actually uh, will raise these screen resistors from 470 up to like a 1K to lower the screen voltages. Um, we may do that on this one as well. But yeah, very, very, very basement-ish circuit going on here um, with, the, with the exception of some of the cap values and stuff I mentioned before. Alright, here's a basement uh, Tweed 5F6 circuit. Uh, you'll notice V1 tube is a 12AY7 uh, on these amplifiers. They also use a uh, 250 microfarad capacitor uh, right there for both halves of that first tube uh, whereas on the Softec they use they use a 220 microfarad on one half for one channel and for the other channel they use a 0.68 microfarad which is a huge difference so one of these channels 
this one is going to be a lot bassier than the other one. Um, this one's actually a little bit closer to kind of Marshall, Marshall-y first stage, whereas this one's more of the original Fender bass mini uh, first stage. One obvious flaw of this schematic is that none of these components are labeled with the board label, so I don't know which one is R1 or R2 or C1, or I don't know any of that. Um, and that's definitely a flaw considering, um, you know, it's l clearly labeled on the board. Uh, so I don't know why it wouldn't have been included here. I want to see if I find another schematic where that, that is included. Alright, so yeah, I did find another schematic for the Softec MiG-50. MiG and this one's definitely better because it has the, um, uh, it has all of the labels here for the resistors and capacitors. That's going to make our life a little, little bit easier. Here's another interesting thing about the MiG-50 uh, that deviates from the baseman. Uh, you see down here the heaters. Okay, these are your heater windings right here. Here's one heater winding for V1 and V2 only. Now we have another heater winding for the 5881 output and V3. Um, and that's a separate wi heater winding than this one. This heater winding uh, is not only separate, but if you look at the center tap right here, it's not grounded or anything. It's it's uh, separated from ground by a resistor, a 56K. Uh, it's also filtered and it is connected directly up here to the power rail. So these this heater uh, is way elevated, uh, which should reduce noise a great a great deal on V1 and V2 in particular, which are the uh, most critical as far as keeping noise out of the you know the rest of the amp. Ah, I was just looking at this thing a little closer, and there's some bad news. Um, this C21, for instance, we'll look at that. It's supposed to be a 22 microfarad at 25 volts. Uh, but if we look on here, uh, C21, that's this big guy, and that's one of the 47 microfarads that's in this cluster of four. So this is definitely not right. This is a different board. You can see this one here, too. That's C8. So we got C7, C8, 21, and 22. And on the schematic, we have uh, our clusters are 14. What is that? 14, 18, 15, and 19. So, yeah, something definitely a little different here. All right, here we are back with this Softec. Um, I don't have the new capacitors in yet, but we're checking uh, some voltages uh, just preliminarily. Everything seems pretty quiet and seems okay. Um, I have it plugged into a load here out on the desk. Um, got 389 volts right now but it's not dialed all the way up we only have 81 volts on the input right there currents fairly low um, don't have any excess draw or anything it seems so I think uh, we're okay the customer did have a concern that the transformers might have you know been on their way out or something because he said he smelled something burn at some point um, and it could have been possibly, I suppose, uh, one of these resistors, something like that. Um, I do notice some, some goop over here that I don't see anywhere else, but I assume that was some kind of, some kind of adhesive, but it looks like it may have come out of this capacitor here, but I, I checked that node and I'm getting good volt, solid voltages everywhere, so I don't know. At any rate, uh, we will uh, know a little bit more probably whenever uh, all of the capacitors come in. Uh, the ones I don't have are the big 220 uh, back here, and they are in series. And you got to be really careful here because um, you'll notice, uh, see this red wire? That's, that's the negative. It comes over here to the positive of this second one. Uh, and that wire right there is hooked to the casing of this capacitor. So that casing actually is why or that uh, series uh, wiring is why this particular one has a casing over the top of it and if you were to remove that and accidentally touch the uh, 
uh, the capacitor shell, the body, while this thing is on, it would shock the hell out of you. So you got to be careful about that. If one of these has that off, uh, you got to be very, very careful. Um, but yeah, okay, well, I'm going to dial it all the way up. Let's see what kind of voltages we get with this thing all the way up. I've heard, I've heard these uh, have horrifically high plate voltages. That's 100 volts right there, and my God, we're all the way up to 480 volts right there. Still, we're doing okay on the current draw at about uh, 0.6 amps. Um, let's get it the rest of the way up. There's our 119 volts, 120 volts, and yeah, good lord, 533 and dropping voltages voltage um, I may just observe this for a couple minutes at full voltage and see what happens okay I have a guitar plugged into channel 2 and I think that was the channel that my customer said uh, wasn't working before um, but I'm not seeing any problems with that. EQ seems to work. The bass seems a little fidgety. So channel 2 actually does work. Okay, it's time to fire this thing up on the Variac. Um, measuring voltages at the first power node there. I have not changed those two power capacitors as of yet. Uh, the two biggest ones, that is. Uh, we have 326 volts at that node. Uh, while we have 65 volts on the input on the wall side of the transformer primary now the current is something we want to pay attention to here if that starts to go up which I'm suspecting it might because I was having some problems with this last night uh, I kinda noticed um, it just kinda acting funny it wasn't getting full voltage and I just shut it down it was it was too late anyway so I'm expecting some weirdness here let's see what it does Okay, we have this thing up to 117 volts on the input, and look at the amps. 2.3 amps. What's going on? And only 380 volts on that first node. There, there should be a lot more voltage than that right there. Oh, look at that, look at that. Look at that both of those tubes both of those tubes melting down okay let's kill that before we start a fire okay I only have this thing dialed up to about 85 volts and we're already at about uh, 0.9 amps right there going on one amp it's still rising um, I'm measuring coming right off that R27 which is a bias resistor I don't even know if they have this pot hooked up because I can I can adjust this thing and it's doing nothing to my reading even though I have it uh, I'm measuring the grid um, right there so it's not doing anything so I'm a bit puzzled by that let's do some poking around in here and see why see why this is doing nothing when I turn the knob Okay, this is interesting. I, after just touching my probe to that um, diode, I'm able to dial this on up, and I'm only getting about half an amp, which is a lot closer to correct. Um, 
and I'm seeing my negative voltage still and these tubes have not yet started going into red plating like they were so something and I'm guessing also if I took this probe off and measured my voltage of the first uh, power node like I'm about to do let's see alright the voltage at the first power node that's still kinda low we also started to get some noise there as I did that I don't know what I would really attribute that to the noise stopped when I put my lead back over here on the diode weird and it sounded like the noise was coming from the power transformer like a buzzing let's go ahead and dial this thing up to the full voltage just just for a second I'm gonna keep my finger next to this kill switch and we'll keep our eye right there on the amps draw I'm at negative 77 volts which uh, I mean that's probably not too far off that shouldn't make that shouldn't give us red plating at least I mean that's, this is just a shorthand I'm just guessing what the voltage should be and I mean it's not far uh, enough off I don't believe to cause huge alarm and it looks like we're holding fairly steady on the amps it's just at least right now we are let's see what happens when I take my probe off of this diode okay I'm gonna stick my probe back on the uh, the other location let's see if we can hear that difference there we go there's our 530 something odd volts so it's it's there now so what the hell happened something is up with that diode I'm guessing something's definitely wrong in the bias on this thing we got a weak trace or that diode is bad or intermittent something like that okay I was able to reproduce the problem and uh, off camera of course let me see if I can do it now on camera um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip it off of standby and it's probably gonna be in its fault state immediately I'm gonna try to uh, stop it from being in fault state uh, and we'll notice the amps right off the bat ready three two one and they should jump up past two amps see there actually no it's back to normal okay so I'm gonna try to get this to fail here's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna press on this board uh, right here on this point and you should see a couple things you should see this voltage drop precipitously and then you should see uh, the current over here jump up to over two amps I don't know if you could see that amps reading back there or not but watch this you ready okay all I'm doing right now is pressing on the board right here in this area there it goes boom see it dropping right there dropping precipitously look at the amperes up over two and and there we go with the yep we go with the red plating okay back with this thing I have um, changed a couple of components right there R21 and VD1 these two here so they are brand new the diodes new and the resistor that's in series with it is new I left the pot I think the pot is fine and uh, this resistor also tests fine um, I did replace uh, this one even though it tested okay uh, just for good measure um, but I think the fault lay in that diode uh, okay uh, we've uh, replaced these components and let's see if it does the same thing whenever we press on the same part of the board again and if I recall what happened before was 
uh, this voltage started to change and our our amperage started to go up and neither of those things are happening and that would have already happened uh, so I think it was the diode pretty confident of that all right, now we're finally going to turn our attention to these larger capacitors. I've pulled them from the chassis. I see no reason to leave these in. It's not like this thing is a uh, hugely collectible or anything, and and persnickety people want to see these in there. I, you know, I don't see any reason to leave them. Um, what we're going to do? We're going to come in here, and we're going to need this area uh, so that we can put our new capacitors in. I have seen other people put these in different places on one of these MIGs. Um, this is a popular spot doing what I'm doing now. Uh, also this real estate up here seems to be kind of a popular spot um, for installing these, but I'm gonna do it this way, um, remove the old ones. I may fashion a plate to kind of cover these holes or I may not. Okay, man, phew, that's, that's all done and wired in. So it's time to fire this thing back up slowly on the Variac to charge these capacitors. I always like to charge new capacitors even uh, slowly on the Variac the first time. Uh, it's just something I've started to do in the past couple years. I had a friend advise me to do that and I kind of trust him. Uh, and uh, before that I was just kind of you know hitting, hitting the switch and saying, okay, let's see what happens. Um, but you know, it's it's worth it to probably charge these up because you don't know if they've been charged up at the factory and it's probably not a good idea to just shock them to life so uh, for the first time so we're going to charge them up let them form slowly and uh, then we will touch up the bias if need be and I think we'll be ready to send this thing on its way and give it a test first okay so just to recap we have changed all of these potentiometers uh, and all of them have been wired to the board with actual wires rather than direct soldered which makes them uh, makes the unit a bit more reliable uh, we've also changed all of the l big electrolytic capacitors in this thing the only ones I did not change were this one which I think had already been changed by previous tech um, and this one over here also this smaller one which tested fine and really isn't in a, in a critical spot in the circuit anyway we, te we uh, have changed all of the resistors on the power rail, uh, including this one here. Um, actually, pardon me, we left this one because it was fine. Uh, this one we did change. We upped the value to a five watt. We changed these two uh, screen resistors uh, to 1K screen resistors. Uh, we changed the diode uh, for the bias. We also changed the uh, series resistor on the bias. Um, and of course that's the capacitor for the bias that was changed as well we are also going to touch up the bias of the amp here um, before we test this thing out so yeah that was all the uh, changes that were made and we're ready to give this thing a listen okay uh, bias in this thing I have come to the conclusion that about negative 77 uh, volts on our bias is about what we want. That's given me about oh, around 19 and a half watts of plate dissipation uh, per per tube. So that's pretty ideal as far as our 70% rule is is concerned. And with the voltages as high as these are, and using 5881s, it's probably wise to stay at around 70%. So I think we're uh, ready to go. And uh, if you guys have one of these. That might be a good starting place right there, about negative 77 volts uh, on your bias. Okay, we're ready to give this uh, Softec a test and continuing with the Eastern European uh, behind the Iron Curtain theme, I'm going to use a 1970s Yolana Iris guitar. Uh, Yolanas were made in Czechoslovakia. Really cool guitars. This one hasn't really gotten a setup. I just grabbed it off the wall for this demo considering this was Russian. So. Uh, you'll have to forgive any intonation issues. Maybe it won't be too bad.
for sticking around so long, and uh, dosvidanya. <laughs>